So if you've ever thought about getting into windsurfing, then you might be wondering what kit or stuff do I actually need before I can even start? Well, in this video, I'll run through the essentials you'll need to get started, the different types of kit you can get and where to buy it all. To be perfectly honest, the kit you need is subjective and there are a lot of different variables, but hopefully this will give you at least a reference point and all the information is what I would give to myself if I was getting into the sport for the first time. So you'll need to get yourself a sail. There are so many different sizes and types of sails, but the main thing to identify the sail is by its size. In my hand is a 4.8 meter sail, more commonly known as just 4.8. You can get anywhere between a 1.5 meter sail and a 12 meter sail. The most common sizes will vary depending on your location and how windy it can get, but the most common for my spot is between about a 4 meter and a 7.8 meter. When I was just starting out, I could only afford one sail, so I went for a 5.5, as I could learn on that in the light winds, and when the wind got up, I could still handle the power. It's such a tricky question to answer, as it's so subjective, but if you are only getting one sail, I'd say get between a 4.0 and a 5.5. If you're on the smaller side, go closer to 4 metre, and if you're taller, go closer to the 5.5. The best option once you get into the sport is to get multiple sails and usually a quiver of three will sort you out across a wide range of conditions. I have a 4.4, 4.8 and a 7 meter. Next you'll need a mast. They come in either SDM or RDM. The most common sizes are 400, 430 and 460. The bigger the sail, the bigger the mast. I go with SDM for bigger masts like the 460 and 490 and RDM with the smaller masts, so 430, 400, 370. They also vary in carbon percentage. You'll most likely keep masts for a long time before replacing them, so I'd highly recommend going for a high percentage carbon mast, 75% and up. My 400 masts are both 100% carbon and I've had them for well over a year uh, and they're holding up really strong. You'll need to get yourself a boom. You should be able to find one that adjusts this basically means that you can cover a range of sails with just one boom. So the most common sizes are 140 to 190 centimetres, uh, as that will cover most small sails, sort of below 6 metres, and 160 to 220 centimetres for big sails, so anything above 6 metres. You can get RDM and SDM booms, but I wouldn't really worry about that too much for now. You also don't need to get a carbon one just yet, an aluminium one will do just fine. Also, if you're just starting, make sure the boom has an uphaul in it, uh, as you'll need that. It's also good if the boom comes with harness lines, but don't stress about that too much to start with. Next, you'll need a mast extension that fits your mast. If you have an SDM mast, you'll need an SDM extension, and if you have an RDM mast, you'll need an RDM extension. The extensions vary in length, but I'd recommend getting at least a 25 centimeter one as that covers the range up to the next mast size. This is what connects your rig to the board, so it's definitely worth getting a high quality UJ, so really you wanna buy this new or hardly used. If you're just starting, you'll need a big board, so something bigger than 180 liters. But if you've had a few lessons and can already do the basics, I'd say go for something that you can grow into as you won't need a beginner board for too long, so get something probably below 160 litres. This means that eventually you'll be able to plane on the board and it won't be useless after a few sessions. So basically the smaller the board, the harder it is to use, so typically you'll find a lot of the top guys using lower literage boards that really kind of match their weight. So for example, I'm 85 kilos and I'm comfortable riding a board that's about 100 liters. If I had to go and buy myself just one setup and I was just starting out, this is exactly what I'd buy. I'd buy a 48 meter sail, a 400 mast, a 140 to 190 boom, aluminium, a mast extension, 25 centimeters, and I'd probably get a 150 liter board that had foot straps. Ideally, I would have some tuition with beginner kit before practicing myself, and I'd definitely do it with others, especially if they're more experienced than me. But I couldn't emphasize enough, really do go out and get some lessons because it's not just about the skill of windsurfing, but a lot of the safety aspects um, are really key to pick up on those initial lessons. You'll need a wetsuit. If it's hot, wear a thin summer suit, one to three mil. If it's cold, wear a thick winter wetsuit, four to six mil. Windsurfers are usually too proud to uh, put on a hood 
uh, gloves and boots uh, until it gets really too bitter. Uh, but for me personally, I feel more comfortable windsurfing when I'm warm. So a hood and boots really help when it's below 10 degrees. But if you're just starting, just learn when it's warm. It's way more fun that way. Either go to a warm country or wait for the summer. You don't need a harness straight away, but eventually you will. So it doesn't harm to get one earlier than you might need one. But from the beginning, I would stick to a buoyancy aid. You'll be falling off a lot at the beginning, so the extra buoyancy is useful and it means you don't damage the board every time you get on with the harness hook. However, some people kind of debate how easy it is to actually get onto the board with a buoyancy aid, but it's definitely either or, or in some cases both, definitely not nothing at all. You really do need some buoyancy out there. Now you might be wondering, where do I get all this kit from? So if you're like me and didn't have a lot to spend on windsurfing kit, then you'll need to look for secondhand kit. So the best place I've found, and actually is where I get most of my kit from, is Facebook. So Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Groups, I can only speak for the UK really and European buyers, uh, but this is where loads of people post kit for sale and you can easily search for what you're looking for. Or if you're on a group, you can just request something and see if someone responds. You can also look on eBay, which will probably be more relevant globally and search kit on there. Uh, you can go to your local spot and ask other windsurfers if they know of anyone who is selling kit. Sometimes people have ads on a bit of paper on their car or van window. You could ask your local sailing or windsurfing clubs or centre if they have anything available. You could also search for holiday makers who are selling off last season's kit. I know that Club Vass have a whole kit for sale section that you can buy straight off of that. You can also get stuff from various retailers that typically sell second hand kit as well as new kit. If you can afford to spend a lot of money then going to your local windsurf shop and buying brand new is also a possibility. With kit, you'll probably never get the perfect setup straight away. It's about experiencing windsurfing, learning what you like, and over time, building a quiver to suit your needs. Um, and that could be dependent on your particular spot uh, or the discipline you're into. You know, if you're going wave sailing, you're gonna want a different setup to someone who wants to go slalom sailing. Um, to someone who's in a light wind spot who might prefer foiling or big sail blasting. You know, there's so many different variations, but it's about working out what's best for you in your particular location. But I hope that helps, especially those who are starting out. So that's about the size of it. Uh, that pretty much wraps everything up. I know it's frustrating at the moment because everyone's self-isolating and can't get out on the water, but I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, hope we all get on the water soon. Mm -hmm.